Hi, Melissa here. I hope you guys like my new setup. Um, showing my Instagram and my Twitter where you can follow me at either one and now to the card I you see that I did some coloring right here I was on Periscope so I wanted to do some coloring on Periscope and if you watched it over there that's great if you didn't I'm sorry because about time you get to it Periscope only holds videos for about 24 hours and then they're automatically deleted so Right now I'm coloring the raccoon and this is from the party animal one that Lawn Farm just released and I did a boo-boo, I accidentally colored it with the lighter gray and then went over it with a darker gray but that's okay, I did fix it and I think it came out okay but at towards the end of the video you're going to see that I used a total different raccoon because at the end of this image I really didn't like how it came, I didn't like how it came out. So I recolored it, stamped it, and stuff like that. Um, I'm just basically using all the grays that I have in my 48 pack of the Zig markers. I'm not going to even try to say the long name because every time I do, I butcher it. Unless I'm like looking at the um, actual marker itself. But again, I am not using any water. I'm just using marker to marker. I find that I get a better effect that way. Um, don't get me wrong, I do like the um, adding water to it, but I just like this way a little bit better. And then if I didn't say it, I am using the Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. I find that this is easier for me to use and blend using these markers. So that's what I have decided to use. I know there's different things that you can use out there, but this is just what I wanted to use for my preference. And right there you see that I'm putting pink. That was a big no-no. That made the card look like, what was I doing? So, like, again, I switched it off. Now I'm coming in with darker colors because certain parts of the raccoon is darker than the other. So on part of the tail it's a little darker and on the belly, I call it the little belly, and the eyes I went darker. I thought I went darker. I think I did. It's just It just wasn't blending right for me. It just wasn't looking right so I just switched it. So now on to the blending part I am going to be using scattered straw and wild honey and I'm going to be making this type of like sunset background you want to say I think and I'm just blending it in um, again I'm using the Canton watercolor paper for this and I think it's coming out okay I, I kind of like the small uh, distress inks you guys let me know your thoughts about them. But when you're blending and you're putting this big old tool in there, it's kind of a pain in the butt. I'm just going to say it. But I get the smaller ones because I have a small space. But if it was up, you know, if I had a bigger space, I think I would just invest in all of the big ones. Because I do have quite a few of the big ones already. But I'm running out of space to store them. So right now I'm still using this scattered straw. And then I'm going to come in with the wild honey in a few seconds, few minutes here. And I'm just going to do the edges. Just to give it a little bit, get it a little bit darker. And I wasn't worried too much about the blending. Because I actually like that way because it, does, it doesn't have to be perfect in my eyesight. As long as it looks really cute, it doesn't have to be perfect. And right there I'm starting out at the edge of the paper because I notice when you start like directly on the paper you're going to get this huge blot and like right there what I did and that was a big no-no because -no, sometimes it's very hard to get that blended out well. Now I'm going to come in with the Lawn Fawn Green. I'm actually using Fresh Cut, Le Fresh Cut and Celery Stick. First I'm going to start off with Celery Stick. Celery Stick is a, a little bit lighter and I'm just going in and blending it into 
the other color there. Um, I decided to use the Lawn Fawn. I wanted to try this out and see how well they blend. They actually blend very well on watercolor paper. I have not tried them on any other type of paper. This is my first time. So, but I will let you guys know that in the near future. But for right now, I think that they're coming out. It's blending really good. And now I'm going to come in with the darker color, which is the, um, oh my gosh, I think it's freshly cut grass. I could be wrong. And I'm just coming in on the edges, and right there you can see that big old blob, and I'm trying to blend it out. It didn't blend out too, but, um, too well, but that's okay because it's going to be covered anyway. So then I come back in with the lighter color, of like the orangey color, yellowish color, and I go in and I blend it all together so it doesn't look awkward. doesn't look, I don't know, awkward. So now I'm coming in. I already stamped the mini things. And of course, you guys, you guys already know what stamp set this is. This is the Happy Harvest. So I'm using that one. And I showed you Spice Marmalade. I think that was. And I'm just coming in and stamping the little corn fill thing, the corn things. I don't even know what those things are called, honestly. So the corn thingies. So I just stamped three. And then I cut out everything while I used a die. Because what I was going to do, this card wasn't going to look like this. I was going to mask everything off, but it just, the masking wasn't working for me. So I was like, no, this is not happening. Not here. So. I'm just trying to place everything together and see how I'm going to like it. And the little hay thing is actually from the Critters. It's the Critters one for the farm. I just used a little haystack out of there. I thought that was cute that the pumpkin can sit on top of it. And I just made a little scene with it. And then also from the party animals, the bird, I masked him off and I added the little hat for Thanksgiving on there. I think he came out really cute. And right there I am actually, actually after you glue something, it's always good to put something heavy on top of it so it's not moving around and the glue really sticks to the paper. That's why you keep seeing me put the block on there every time. I just think that it holds it better. And as you can see, the raccoon, he's colored different. He's colored the right way that I liked. Not, not the other way. So I thought it would be cute to put the pumpkin on top of the little haystack thing. Because you see that, like in decorations, I've seen that everywhere I go with decorations. Actually, my yard's decorated like that. So, um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and leave me a comment if you want to. I won't be offended if you don't. And thanks again for watching, and until next time, guys. Bye.